today we are going to make a prop box or pedestal whatever you may call it let's go Okay, now we have everything that we need to get this DIY project started. I'm gonna go through everything I have and I'll let you know if there is a substitute for anything that we have on the table to get this project done. Now, please, if you do find this video helpful, all you have to do is hit that like button for me right now. You don't even have to subscribe, but just hit the like button for me. I'll appreciate that equally. So let's go ahead and get into it now. First, we're going to start off with the tools that I have. So mainly, I'm going to be using a drill with a Phillips head screw bit. And then I also have a few uh, drill tips. Now, if you don't have a drill, you don't have a drill bit, you don't have these, no worries. The alternative to using the drill is using a hammer with nails. So. We'll follow that up with screws. So this is the uh, actual screws that I'm going to be using to um, bind these together. Um, and again, the substitute for this, if you don't have a drill, would be actual wood nails. So you are fine there. Also, I have some sandpaper. And so this is to uh, kind of get rid of the edges that are left on the wood since your model would be essentially sitting on this. So you don't really want anybody to get cut. So get some type of sandpaper where you could kind of foul the edges down on this uh, wood. Also have a tape measure. The tape measure is going to be important because this wood is about three quarters inch thick. And so I want that screw to sit right in the middle of that. So what I'm going to do before anything is mark off where I want these screws to go. And I'm probably going to put three in each side where I bring these uh, pieces of wood together. So tape measure and you see I have my marker right here. OK, now, you know, we want a nice white uh, finished product. So I got this paint spray and of course I'll put everything in the link description below um, and this was about five six dollars but it is a white gloss paint so that I can get kind of that gloss finish okay so we definitely definitely need this right here okay now added support now these are some angle attachments where we are already going to have these screws connecting the wood on the edges, but on the inside, we are going to add it, ex add some extra support with these angled um, uh, pieces right here. So that will help with more support. The more support, the better, because you never know different types of weights that's going to be sitting on the box. And so, you know, the more secure, the better so redundancy is key and then of course i have some screws to support that now we're going to get into it but make sure your screws are not longer than the depth of the board this is three quarters of an inch so you don't want to have a screw that's one inch long because once you screw that in it's going to be coming outside of the wood so make sure you keep that in mind okay now these are dowel pins i'm gonna kind of use these at as kind of set pins and you'll see why i do that now you don't 
have to do it. Um, but for me, I just want some modularity. So the top where they actually sit on, it is not going to be screwed in. It's not going to be nailed in. It's going to be set with these dowel pins just in case I want to increase the height. So we will get into that after I explain these, but I think it'll be a, a good extra uh, piece. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to have the ability to change the size of it, then you could just go ahead and just screw it in and it'll just be one, one size, right? Okay. Now the wood, the wood is great because you can do it two ways. I got everything from Home Depot and it cost about $100 for everything, all the materials included. Now the wood, the wood you can get cut at your local Home Depot or you can have the company cut it and just send it to Home Depot. And so I opted to have the company cut it just so that I could probably have a better it a better accurate piece of a cut on the wood instead of uh, someone at Home Depot just kind of doing it. So I hope these are more precise cuts <laughs> in a sense. But what I ended up doing was I got five pieces of wood, right? And so all five of these um, are going to come together to make the box. Of course, we got four sides, so we need four pieces of wood. And then on top, we need one piece of wood, so that's going to be five. Now, the thing about this is I have three pieces that are 24 inches by 24 inches or two uh, feet by two feet. And then I got two other cuts that are 24 inches by 22 and a half inches. Now, you might be thinking, why did you do that, T-Mid? So let's go ahead and I'm going to give you a breakdown of why I did that. So check this out. Okay, so here's the breakdown of why I cut my board 24 inches by 22 and a half. You see the board's length is 22 and a half inches, but I also took into account that I would be joining it with two boards on each side that had a thickness of 0.75 and 0.75. So when you add all of those up together, you get 24 inches. And so I needed that length to be 24 inches, which is why I cut my board 22 and a half inches. Now, this is a great point to add for people that want their pedestal to be seamless like this instead of actually being able to see the top part where the model or subject or whatever you're going to be using sit on you can actually build it a little bit differently and the only thing that you need to do is buy four two by four pieces that have a length of 22 inches and then you also need your top piece of wood to be cut 22 and a half inches by 22 and a half inches and that's so that instead of the top piece sitting on top of this box like this it will actually sit inside on top of those two by fours that you mount to the side of the panels all together. And that way you get a seamless look like you see right here. Okay, so now you see why I got everything that way I got it. I wanted everything to be perfectly square, uh, 24 by 24. So by making those cuts uh, the way I did, everything should fit in a 24 inch by 24 inch form factor and that's how i want it to be except for the top where i'm using those dowel pins so that if i want to remove the top board since the weight of the person will be sitting on it it'll be pretty much secure with their weight and those set pins but if i want to remove it and add maybe maybe i want the box to be an extra foot tall then 
I can uh, go grab, you know, some uh, 12 inch wood and build another smaller piece that will add another foot to my original stand. And then I'll have a three foot box or pedestal instead of a two foot. So I like modularity. If you want yours just to be two feet, just go ahead, screw it in, be done with it. Otherwise you can follow this. Either way works. I'm going to go with that because I want to be able to switch it up just in case I might have someone way taller. So just think about that, you know? Okay. So what I'm going to do now, the first step is I'm going to go ahead and mark these off. Um, what I want to do is I want to have three screws on each side. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure these equally apart, 6, 12, 18. Um, and then I'm going to put those screws into the wood. So six inches, uh, 18 inches, and this is from the edge. So if we have 24 inches, then from the edge, I'm going to screw six inches here. And then I'm going to screw 12 inches here, which will be the middle of the board. And then I'm going to screw 18 inches. And so that should be pretty even on the front side. And then also we want to uh, keep in mind that the depth of the board is three quarters of an inch. So we are going to mark this at six inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, and then also we are going to uh, measure right here on this edge that the depth so that we are exactly uh, half of three quarters of an inch so that we screw into the board almost in the middle of the board. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach these angle pieces to the wood before I add some extra support on the edges with these. Um, what I want to do is make sure that everything is 24 by 24. So that shorter cut that I have, is not going to go on the edge like this. It's going to sit on top of the 24 by 24 piece. So make sure you keep that in mind because if you don't, then instead of having a 24 by 24, which this would be right here, if you put this on the edge, then you're going to have a 24 by, you're going to have 0.75 on this side, 0.75 on that side, which is one and a half. So that will be 24 by 25 and a half, which isn't square, which isn't going to fit. Uh, when you put the top seat on there where the model will be sitting. So make sure you remember if you do these exact dimensions that I'm doing that you set that smaller piece on top of the 24 by 24 piece. So this is the 22 and a half by 24 piece and I'm sitting it on top of the 24 by 24 so that I can make sure everything remains as it's supposed to. Now, when I sit, sit this, this length right here is 22 and a half. The thickness right here is 0.75. I'm gonna have one of these 0.75s also on this side, 0.75. So it will make it 24 and then this will be 24. So just keep that in mind.
Okay, so we got the <laughs> four main pieces joined. Now I need to join them all together, just like we just did with the angle piece and some added support. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, kind of put these together. It's probably going to be a little bit of work, but just just like we did the last one. So um, we kind of speed through this and make it happen. But one key thing I want to say is make sure you line everything up like it's supposed to. Um, the shorter ends are supposed to sit on top of the longer ends because I'll show you this right here. See, we get something like this. And then when you do the measurement, it should be it should be 24 all the way around. So double check that 24 because that last piece that we have to sit on top is going to be 24 by 24. So it should sit flush on top of this box. So what I'm going to do is put it to two feet and then go and do my measurement and see this is two and a half. So what needs to happen is this needs to sit on top of there like that and then do the measurement over. I have 24 on the top and then I should have 24 on the side like this. Okay, so make sure you double check those measurements because you do not want it to be offset. If it is offset, then this piece right here, which is 24 by 24, won't sit flush on the top. So make sure you check to make sure you get that 24 by 24. So I made a mark exactly 12 inches, which is in the middle of the board. And then I'm gonna put a pin right in the middle. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing for that actual board where I want all the most of the depth. It, so this is only going to be maybe a quarter, a quarter of an inch. And then most of the depth is going to be cut through the main board because it's 0.75. So I have 0.75 and then I'll go in about a little over a quarter. So that will give me about an inch and an eighth, which will be perfect to cover the uh, length of this. Okay. So what I'll do is measure this and put my mark where put my mark where the 12 is. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna go for that 3 eighths of an inch from the edge again. Okay. So we got one eighths, two eighths, three eighths, and just before I before I use that quarter, I'm gonna use a smaller one to kind of like set the tone for this this hole I'm gonna drill. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back in with the actual quarter. Okay. Yeah, 
There we go. So we're gonna clean some of that off. It's telling. Okay, so now we are going to take this pen and let's, let's, let's test it out. So we can roger that. I love how that fits. So you can see how this pen is, uh, is kind of like a set pen on this side, but then if I want to lift it up, I can lift it up. Um, but then what I'm going to do is do the same thing on this side so okay so let's put this side on and then that side and there we have it so i can take these off but then you notice it's it's on there and then you're gonna have the model sitting on top as well so you're pretty much good now if you don't care about the modular piece of it then i would say you can go ahead and uh screw it in or like those angle attachments instead of from the top you can go underneath inside of the box and then angle this piece down to the sides and i probably would use like one two three so three on every edge and then that would pretty much clamp this down if you don't care about being able to take the top off or not. Um, also, me being able to take the top off allows me to put other things inside when I go to store it. So whether it may be a soft box or I might have some RGB lights, because if you think about it, when I go store this, everything that's in the hollow space inside is just emptiness. So for me to be able to open up this box and put some stuff inside of that hollow space when it's just sitting is just kind of like a space saver for me too so that, that's kind of what my thought is as to why i'm doing it like this so we pretty much got everything that we needed to do from this standpoint now let's take it outside add a few layers of this uh, gloss white paint let it dry and there we have it we we have our prop box look it was a job, but we, we almost done. We almost done. Let's, let's go. So we are coming to the last portion of this. And so what I have here is a fowler, some sandpaper. I'm just gonna go over the edges of this box just to kind of get the sharpness off so that when anybody sits on it. So I'm gonna go around the edges and kind of smooth those and round those off and then we're gonna have fun with the spray paint and I'll probably put easily three, three coats on there. So let's go ahead, get started. I jumped into something that I don't care about getting paint on. So let's, let's finish this on up. days later here is the finished product not bad at all i'm actually happy um just want to give you a few lessons learned that way you could take it and implement it when you do this now the first thing is that i already explained that if you don't want the look of this top piece you actually want this top piece to sit inside the frame so that you don't see this piece right here I explained to you that earlier in the video. Another way you could get around doing that is getting something called plastic wood. Um, and then you can fill in kind of like these spaces 
and then you will have to kind of like paint over it again. But I would probably go with the previous uh, suggestion, which is building added support inside and then uh, cutting this piece smaller so that it sits inside the frame. So that is the first thing. Now, the second thing is what I would try to do, I don't know if you can actually see, but this is actually like plywood stick together. So if you can go for some pieces of wood that are whole pieces of wood and not smaller pieces of wood kind of stacked on top of each other, that will make your life a lot easier. Trust me. So that is the second thing. When, it, when you go to join these together with a screw or what have you, that will make it a lot easier instead of having to go through essentially uh, a couple of pieces of wood instead of one entire thing. The next thing is I would actually paint inside a control area because I lost a lot of spray paint when I was uh, spray painting outside because of the wind. It was just not working out well for me. So I ended up moving this inside of my garage where I got a lot better spread. And so you can see this is uh, two, two coats of paint right here. So worked out pretty well. And then the next thing is that these paint that I used is actually paint that has primer inside of it so make sure you get paint that has primer inside of it or get primer and do primer first and then add your coats of paint to it and that will make the world a difference the last thing that i have here is that you seen that those angle pieces that i use inside of this box i use two those pieces are so cheap like 50 cent a piece that instead of I put like one here and one here on each corner, I would actually go back and I probably will add a third one. So like one, one in the middle and then one on the end because it doesn't cost me anything, 50 cent for each one. So that will add some extra support as well. So that is kind of everything that I have here. I actually like this look. And so like I was saying to people that kind of want the seamless look where you can't see this piece is that when I put this in Photoshop, this is a quick clone stamp for me right here. And we'll just eliminate this top piece. So you won't be able to see it because I'll basically clone this part right here and just copy it all the way across. And so <laughs> I'd rather do that than do the extra work to build the inside framing and but if you have time go for it this is really just a guide to set you on the uh, right path this is my first time making this as well so I definitely take some of the things that I've done and this is just a guide as well so take what I did and if you see another path that uh, fits your need even better definitely uh, take that route but this is kind of like a stepping stone because I've seen a lot of people that want to use these in their studio or even outside but don't know the right path to kind of take to get started so just use this as a stepping stone I hope that this helps somebody somewhere and as always if you found this informative at any piece of information that I gave please hit the like button if you really enjoyed it leave a comment for me and if it just succeeded what you expected go ahead and subscribe for me please to the end to the IDG. appreciate you watching peace